Hello, I'm JW, and today we're going to have a look at this control panel. Now, this we've seen in the uh, videos previously, basically where it was engraved and cut on the CNC machine. And what we see here is basically just a picture of the uh, finished panel, and it's all been wired up on the back as well. So uh, we're going to actually uh, just do a bit quick test on this thing to make sure all the wiring is in the correct place and the various indicators and switches do what they are supposed to do. And after that we'll see uh, some pictures of it in its final installation and obviously what it's actually for and how this thing actually works. I'm just testing this panel which I just uh, wired up at the back and I've got all the wires here on the table. As you can see there's quite a lot of wires here, these will connect to the rest of the equipment which of course is not here because uh, that's obviously where this thing is going to be installed. Uh, so we're just checking that we've got all the wires in the quick places so when we get to the other end and connect these something doesn't blow up and uh, flames come out of it. So uh, let's just uh, switch on here. So we've got the off indicator which is what we want as it's in the off position. These two here represent the pump so we should see 24 volts here when the pump is theoretically on which should also coincide with these lamps here being on. The pumps are not 24 volt ones of course this runs to contactors which then switch the pumps on uh, about uh, two and a half kilowatt pumps each so also they can't be switched directly. So if we turn to the on position then the green one should come on and the other one goes off. Now we can if we go to manual we should be able to get one of the pumps on assuming we attach the demand wires together which we can. Let's just switch over to B and A manually and if we go to the automatic choice then we should be able to get that to switch on the uh, other two we've got there, which we can, and in the manual position that should do uh, absolutely nothing, which is what it does, and in the auto position then uh, that should also do nothing, which is what we want. Now we have the various trip lines which should illuminate when faults occur on these three, which they do. And let's see if they should all work uh, in various combinations as well, so that's fine. Uh, if we put one pump on permanently we can see the voltage on the pump B is on there, so that's fine. And when there's no demand on the other one that will drop away. And if we connect the other one then we should see the voltage on pump A, which we do, so be fine. And now if we go to manual with no demand then we shouldn't see anything at all. And we should just see pump A come on, we've got the 24 volts there. And on pump B we should get the 24 volts there, which drops away when the demand is not required. And we should find we can't have both at the same time because yep, the switches one breaks before the other one actually switches on. And in the opposition we shouldn't get anything, which of course we don't. That's fine. And then obviously manual, we don't get anything when the thing is on because the other one is disconnected. But if we connect that one then we'll get A like that, which is the right hand meter. And then if we have a demand on the other one, on the auto switcher, then we should get pump A. There we go. So that's fine. And in that position that will do nothing. That should still be pump A, which it is. So that's all fine. So uh, there we have it. So uh, that's all working. So that can now be uh, taken away and installed where it belongs. Now what this is actually for is a set of pumps, and these are actually for uh, water. And uh, this is a picture here of the original control panel. This uh, dates from 2003, so it's about 15 years old. And as you can see there it's got a bit of brown tape stuck on the front there because uh, at least half of this is actually broken and doesn't work anymore. And even the half that does work was uh, going somewhat intermittent so it worked perfectly well most of the time and then of course sometimes it wouldn't work at all. And uh, not working at all involved it uh, basically turning on the pump continuously and running it 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Which obviously wasted a vast amount of electricity as well as of course wearing things out prematurely. And uh, originally it uh, had the two pumps there and the uh, two switches on either side would basically select between uh, off in the centre position, manual which was kind of useless because it just ran continuously, and auto which of course was the normal operating position. Now the point of these is that this particular building 
doesn't have a particularly good mains water supply and the actual supply coming in from the road only has a pressure in the region of 1.8 to 2 bar which uh, although is within the legal requirements is actually pretty poor and this is also a four-storey building so by the time we get up to the top floor at least one bar that pressure has been lost simply due to the fact of the height of it so on the top floor at the worst times you're only going to get sort of less than one bar of pressure on the mains water which unfortunately is uh, pretty feeble so what we've basically got here is two pumps and a large uh, water tank which you can see in this picture is the blue thing behind the cabinet and basically that fills up from the mains there's two pumps on the floor and then when anyone turns on a tap or whatever else in the building the pump will switch on and obviously uh, provide a much better pressure to the various outlets. Now this particular panel uh, originally had a rather complicated and unnecessary electronic controller and having actually dismantled the thing and we can see here the inside of the cabinet. The uh, controller used to be at the top in the uh, centre there where that uh, round timer thing has now been fitted and it appears that it was actually designed to control at least six individual pumps because the uh, thing was far too complicated it had at least six relays on the controller board. There was actually two circuit boards, one stacked on top of the other. And there was a whole pile of wiring in here which basically went to empty unused terminal blocks. You can see those towards the bottom right of the picture here. So uh, although this was probably designed for uh, six of these, it was only running two of them. And to say half of the controller board was actually broken. The result being that the right-hand switch, when it was put in auto, the uh, pump would have actually run continuously and didn't actually get turned on and off at all. And say now, well, well recently the left-hand one is broken as well, and uh, it's also having times of doing that as well. Now, the original pressure sensor for this was a uh, electronic type, which basically gave an output current between four and twenty milliamps, and presumably that was interpreted by the uh, board and its uh, microcontroller, and whatever, to turn the pumps on and off as desired. But uh, just for two pumps, that's far too complicated. So basically, what we're doing here is removing most of the contents of this cabinet disposing of most of the wiring, a fair amount of which you can see is on the floor there and there's another pile of that just over to the right out of frame there and what we're going to do instead of having that uh, electronic sensor and some useless uh, electronic control board with uh, no doubt some custom uh, control firmware in there just going to throw all that away and instead of that we're going to use a pressure switch here's a picture of the particular switch we're going to use and uh, this essentially connects to the water supply a thready connection on the bottom and then there's a cable goes in the other side there and what happens here is that it will switch on when the pressure falls below a set threshold. That will turn the pump on, and then when the pressure reaches a higher level, then the pump again will turn off. And that's pretty much all we need. We're also going to fit this pressure gauge here just for indication, just to show what the system pressure is. The existing system does have one, but unfortunately it's much smaller than this one. It's also broken and it's filled with rusty water. And it's also mounted upside down at the back, so you can't even see the thing without grovelling on the floor using a torch. So uh, a bit of a fail there by whoever installed that. And you can see the new control panel there on the door on the right-hand side there. That's basically the back view. So it's just fitted through a hole in the front panel and secured with some screws. Now here's a look at the uh, inside of the cabinet uh, once all the wiring was completed. And what we've got here, essentially, is most of this was already in here and at the top there what's missing is the electronic controller which essentially filled pretty much the whole of the top section there that's been removed and uh, this uh, timer thing has been put in instead and what we've got here is basically the mains power comes in at the bottom left and we've got that uh, isolator switch there and that goes through to the thing on the front panel basically just turn on off the mains there for the whole thing so it comes in at the bottom there on the blue and uh, red wires there and the earths go to that sort of bar in the middle. There's also an earthing stirred over towards the right. And then bizarrely there's another earthing stirred uh, just a bit further over on the side. And then there's an additional one on the uh, gland plate at the bottom and another one going over to the door. So mains power comes in there. This is 240 volts, a single phase. And the uh, power comes out of the switch on that uh, red and black wire. And that goes up to the uh, two devices directly above. And these are overload trips for the two motors. So essentially what these will do is that uh, if the motor draws too much current for too long, these things will disconnect and therefore uh, cut power to that particular motor, like preventing it from being uh, setting on fire or something like that. So the power goes through those, and then from there the power comes out of those at the uh, bottom of them and goes to the two contactors, which you can see at the uh, bottom left and the bottom centre. 
and from the bottom of those you can see those wires coming out which go to the two individual pumps. Now that's actually a shielded cable but whoever fitted it before has not done a particularly good job of uh, actually doing the wiring there. They've basically just sort of taken a bit of the braid off the side with the earth wire and just put a bit of tape over the top. Uh, not ideal but uh, that's how it is so that's how it will be staying. Now in terms of the control on this what we've got uh, is at the top right there's a transformer and this takes in the uh, mains voltage 240 volts on the black and red wires and it outputs 24 volts AC and comes out on those two white wires at the top there and uh, we've actually got that coming down to those terminal blocks in the centre row there towards the right hand side so basically one of those is basically what we call the 0 volts and the other one is the plus 24 and then from those terminal blocks we've got wires going across to various other devices now on the right hand side in the middle row you see there's a circuit breaker and that's actually on the 24 volt AC line so that uh, if anything was say to short out or some fault occurred on the 24 volt circuitry that would trip and disconnect that side of it and obviously that would avoid the transformer basically melting and uh, setting on fire and you'll see there's another circuit breaker over to the left side of the centre row and that's actually for the mains input which goes to the transformer so it's another 2 amp one so we've basically got protection on both sides of the actual transformer there. Now the way that this now operates is that everything in terms of the control is 24 volts AC and that obviously comes from that little transformer at the top right. Previously it had some 12 volt uh, parts as well which came from the electronic deal but uh, we've basically thrown those away. So once it's actually turned on from the switch on the front panel power will go to the uh, various parts in this and whether the actual pumping is required or not is determined by the pressure switch we can see at the bottom left of the picture here. So essentially if the pressure falls below a set level that will basically close the switch inside and then that will come back into the control cabinet and that, that goes via the timer switch on the top left there and essentially what this does is just intervals it changes between pumps 1 and 2 or A and B as they're labelled here and then from that the 24 volts goes to the two contactors at the bottom left and bottom centre so depending on the position of the timer it will either switch on pump A or pump B and that turns on the main supply to the particular pump. These pumps are in the region of 2 kilowatts each so hence also need the uh, contactors to do that. If one of the pumps should uh, say take too much current or overload say the motor was stalled or the uh, rotor jammed or something then the uh, appropriate trip in the middle there will uh, detect this and that will basically just cut the mains power to the pump and in order so we can know that this has happened on those particular trips we've also used uh, one of the auxiliary contacts and we can see those here just with those orange wiring so what we have there those are normally open contacts so uh, no connection in normal operation if the thing is tripped or basically turned off by that thing on the front those will be joined together and that will connect 24 volts AC and that gives you an indication on the red indicator on the front panel and that's the same for both pumps uh, A and B. Now there is a manual option on the switching on the front panel and all that does is basically disconnects that uh, timer at the top which is basically a changeover switch and instead of that it just puts another switch in the circuit on the front panel so you can just manually select from pump A or B as required and that's really only there so that if one of the pumps had to be taken away for repairs or maintenance you can then keep the system running but only using one of the pumps that's there so it really is a uh, convenience factor for when maintenance is required. And the other thing we've got there in the centre there in the centre rail we've actually got a small relay and again this is a 24 volt uh, AC thing as well and in normal operation that relay coil is powered and it's actually powered via a sensor in the tank which is that blue thing behind and that sensor is normally closed and the only time that's going to open is if for some reason the tank actually ran out of water so there was some problem with the uh, filling of it or whatever so at normal operation that relay is closed and the relay has two sets of contacts one of which in the powered state will be closed and that actually connects to the 24 volt supply to the contactors and the other one is normally open so in the normal state that doesn't do anything so what would happen if the uh, tank ran out of water that relay would no longer have any power and the contacts would either close and open depending on which set it was the result of that would be that the contactors no longer get any 24 volt supply so neither pump is actually going to work and the other set would then close and provide 24 volts AC to a red indicator on the front panel and that's the one we see here with the uh, pump water low so again that would indicate there was a problem with the water supply 
and of course prevent the pumps running so that we don't have them running without any water in which of course would uh, very quickly destroy them and being one these pumps cost the best part of a thousand pounds each that's something you definitely don't want to happen other stuff in there we've got say the turner blocks in the middle right there which are just for the uh, 0 and 24 volt supply and uh, those terminal locks at the bottom are now mostly unused because, say, they weren't actually used before, they just had a load of wires going in from the electronic controller with pretty much nothing connected on the other side. So just using the few over at the right-hand side there for the inputs from the actual pressure switch and also the water level switch in the tank as well. Here's a view of the finished panel and it's actually turned on and working. And as you can see there, the uh, new panel basically takes over the whole front of the existing cabinet. And uh, we put that extra text on the bottom basically for instructions for the uh, operation of it. And also to switch it to manual if some uh, major problem occurred and you want to switch over to the main supply only. Which although is not particularly good, it can of course be used and uh, people can still get water if there was some major problem. And um, we can see also in this picture the uh, blue large item behind all of that is actually the water tank itself. It's uh, at least one metre in each direction, so it's uh, over a thousand litres of capacity there. And below that, on the left, we can see the uh, pressure vessel or the expansion vessel. And that's just sitting on the bottom there. And to the bottom right, we can actually see the two pumps there, those black objects. They are actually both similar, though one's been replaced uh, more recently. One is original, so they're not quite the same in design. And on the bottom of the panel there, we can see the pressure switch there and then the pressure gauge there which is just for indication only to give a visual indication of what the pressure in the system actually is and the rest of it in that picture there's a few valves and levers there which can be used to switch it over to main supply only and therefore not use either pump if that was required. So that's the deal with that and you may be wondering why we didn't just buy a new electronic controller for the particular panel we have and the reason being is that uh, being from 2003 the particular control panel is no longer available and hasn't actually been available for many years so you can't just sort of pop out and buy one even when it was available it was in the many hundreds of pounds price range and it appears to be far too complex for this system anyhow there is allegedly a replacement but uh, as with a lot of these replacements it's not a direct swap in and just put the wires in it it requires a fair amount of extra work as well so in the end it was just easier and considerably cheaper just to put an actual uh, pressure switch there which is basically just on and off and that does the job perfectly well. The only thing this new system doesn't have is it doesn't have a capacity to run both pumps at the same time should the need arise if there was some uh, huge demand for water, although that could be added in at a later date if needed. But say it's been in this state of only one pump actually working for the last five years plus and uh, nobody complained up to that point, so again, that's not really an issue for this particular installation. So that's it for this particular video, and a part of this video was already put out on uh, Facebook, so you may have seen that uh, already, and if not then uh, details of that are in the video description. And I also put pictures of various things on Instagram and Twitter, so again details of those in the description as well. And also if you want to see videos before anybody else then you can do so at Patreon, and at all of these services it's JWFlame. So until next time, thanks for watching.